anytime soon, but I hope you enjoy it. It's called Marooned in Mullingar. <laughs> We thought this day would never come. We had all but given up. The odds looked almost as long as Westmead winning the Sam Maguire Cup. <laughs> to say we're relieved and delighted is understatement of the year that Orla and James walked down the aisle and finally made it to here. As the day was fast approaching, James was numbed by it all. <laughs> but we're so glad he's recovering and ready to have a ball. When Orla got a job in Mullingar with the International Sock Company, we expected her to come home with socks, which she did, but James was in the socks, you see. <laughs> we first met James in 02, outside the church where today they wed, at Mom and Dad's wedding anniversary mass. He looks a lovely guy, we said. We exchanged pleasantries, hello, and how are you? What's your name? Where are you from? And what do you do? All was going very well. Till he mentioned he was from Mullingar. The tension, it was palpable, palpable. No, that was going too far. He seemed to be such a gentleman, but all would be better off as a spinster than marry a man from Westmead, should they hadn't even won a Linster. <laughs> but Orla saw a shining star right through the maroon and white. If you at least win a Linster, James, they'll get over it all right. <laughs> so James returned to Mullingar and told his teammates of his plight, and vowed he would not lose Orla without one hell of a fight. <laughs> he prayed to every saint there is, Saint Loman especially, please help me win a provincial crown to take down to the Lee. So two hard years later, with a mighty bunch of men, James and Westmead made history as the Leinster they did win. <laughs> so James returned out to Cork, expecting to be treated as a martyr, so it was told in no uncertain terms, so I suppose it'll do for starters. <laughs> when Orla arrived to mom and dad as child number seven, she was as good as gold since the day she was born. They thought they were in seventh heaven. So Nullog was brought along. She was the most demanding of the eight. And while Orla was always early, Nullog always made her late. Sure, none of wanted everything her older sister had, and no matter how much she copied her, Orla never got mad. So Orla was happy to choose for two, and so they were known as the twins. And even when Orla won a game, she said, It's okay, Nolan, you win. <laughs> While all of us in the family have won an All Ireland gold, Orla has a unique distinction, if the truth be told. She's the only one in the family to win an All-Ireland for volleyball. So while Orla's sweet, I warn you, James, not to mess with her at all. Because Orla is very agile and possesses a lot of skill. She excels at spiking, blocking, and dumping, and going for the kill. <laughs> Orla and James, a few years ago, took a little break. And the reason for this time out, well, everyone had a different take. The Mullingar crew, they were convinced, that James had one thing he really needed to do. He was dazzled by all the Celtic crosses in Cork and knew he wanted one too. He would dedicate himself fully to the cause and Orla would just have to wait because he needed to bring Sam to Mullingar. He hoped it would be too late. But the reason for their time apart for me stood out a mile. Orla had to dedicate herself fully to getting Nullock up the aisle. <laughs> You see, Orla's a born organiser, and Nullock is definitely not. Orla needed time to pick Nullock's dress, her flowers, her invites, her hotel, the lot. Luckily for both of them, their dress size was the same, so Orla was fitting on bright.